We're pulled over. Okay, so we are being pulled I over. I don't know why I don't like getting the cuffs. Uh, we got it, Nico. I'll do all the talking. Oh, okay, Nico, don't make him angry. Just stop, pull just over. stop, just, just stop. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, it's up. It's off. And then window it's, down, it's off. hands off the wheel. Sir, my hand, he has a hand on his gun. Yes, sir, keep it up there with right, please. Yes, sir. How you doing, officer? Oh, put your hand up right Oh, yes, sir. Dash, yes, sir. On the dash, please. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> All right. What, what's going on back at the trailer down at the shopping center? Hello, my beloved audience. Today, using gathered iPhone footage and animation, I'm going to walk you through my recent arrest and jail stint that arose as a product of one of our shoots. Now, I'm legally prohibited from using the footage that the officer asked about down at the shopping center, but here's what happened. According to the police report, our crew was doing a story on how Coke and Pepsi are destroying teeth and causing other health issues. That's true. And we were especially concerned with these companies exploiting people in the Appalachia region. For the bit, allegedly, we went to a free dental clinic in eastern Tennessee and, quote, Mullen pulled a dental tool from his pocket and started examining a patient who was in the treatment area. Mullen stated he did enter the medical clinic and stated he was an amateur dental hygienist and examined a female. Mullen did state he asked the female's permission before examining her. No big deal, right? What I thought was a 2 out of 10 on the scale of bit intensity ended up leading me into one of the biggest legal snafus of my life. You had permission to go in and do that inside? Well, everybody was very, very kind and, and allowed us to at first and didn't seem to have any problem. And then they just got a little uncomfortable toward the end and we left when we were told okay. to leave. When you go into a medical facility like that without yes, sir. permission? Yes, sir. Then you have some issues going? Yes, sir. You have licenses to do a documentary? You have licenses to go into the... We did not, sir. Okay, you don't? We do not, sir. All right. Damn it, almost slipped away. We were close. I feel like we always get just this far away. Like, well, we're out of there, but we're not out of there. I don't think he's going to unload the clip in the car if they see this moving. <laughs> what if he lost it on Nico? Uh, what if he just, like, he's resisting? Stop. Stop. Don't okay, I just kind of much I don't move. Yeah, well, sorry. Get back here with me. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. You know, if Danny's in jail for 12 hours, man, we're getting hammered, dude. If Danny's in jail for 12 hours, me and Nico are getting hammered. I'm going to say it. Then he's not gonna be in jail. Look at there. He's, yeah, he he's, is, dude. He's going for jail. Danny's gonna be in jail. Oh, he's gonna talk him his way out of it. He's about to say he's Dan's a judge. Oh yeah, I see him in the mirror. He should be able to silver tongue it out. I could silver tongue it out there with him, but he doesn't. He doesn't respect my Hispanicness. He doesn't trust the fact that I'm Hispanic. You know, Nico. He thinks I'm a sp and it's sp can't do this. Sp can't talk to the cops. He says that's his old. He always says that. Um, doesn't seem too bad. The officer is being very nice now. He's he's settled down. He's just saying that they he, they just have to decide if they're gonna try to file something for trespassing, which is better than like assault with a medical instrument. <laughs> Here, false hope fills my head. I even start planning for the rest of the shoot after we inevitably get released. We'll probably once we get up to Kentucky, we'll just get a hotel room and like shower off real quick. We're gonna have you guys follow us down to our office. Yes, sir. And uh, if you got these back then, and I'll let you know what's going on. From yes, there. sir. Absolutely, right. sir. One in the back. Yeah, we got one guy sandwiched between cops. Anyway, we're a police chase around here, dude. They throw spike strips. In the police station, false hope was still in my head that there was going to be a slightly more detailed interview, but then I was going to be let to go on my merry way. Well, that hope was punctured to a degree when one of the officers brought out a law book and almost apologetically told me that, hey, allegedly impersonating a medical professional in the state of Tennessee is a felony. For people unfamiliar, a misdemeanor is like doing something in high school that lands you in detention. A felony, on the other hand, is doing something that gets you expelled. I'm not too familiar with Tennessee, but in California, to give you some perspective, doing something as serious as brandishing a firearm at somebody, that's only a misdemeanor. So any kind of felony is big boy shit. So, I was in a little bit of stunned disbelief when they slapped the cuffs on me, told me they were taking me to jail, and then led me past Nico and Leo into the cruiser. 
There goes Danny boy, off in cuffs. We're trying to get this thing. Class C felony is what. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was trying to get this thing. So yeah, you gotta hold it for me. In the police cruiser, I wasted precious time taking this video. I should have been reaching out to lawyers. I should have been game planning with Nico and Leo, but. I guess I still thought this was going to be a slap on the wrist, and little did I know that I only had 10 to 15 more minutes with my phone. And the slap on the wrist energy continued as I was processed into the jail. I remember joking about my scrubs to the officers, since they were pretty much jail clothes. I said something like, well, at least I'm already in proper attire, at which he laughed good-naturedly. When they were fingerprinting me into the jail, the vibe between me and the rest of the jailers was very cordial too. Sort of like I was a new employee getting to know everybody. I figured I'd swipe my credit card, pay the bond, and be out that afternoon. Maybe pay a little fine once they inevitably dropped the charge down from a felony. Here's where everything got dark. When I asked the lady at the front desk about my bond, which for people who don't know, bond is a sum of money that you pay in order to be released from jail until your court date, and assuming you show up at your court date, you get that money back. I was very ready to swipe my credit card and get out of there. Bond paid. But when I asked the lady at the front desk about that bond, she said, You have no bond. You're gonna have to be here until the judge can see you on Monday. Well, it was Thursday afternoon. Which meant I was about to spend four solid days in Hawkins County Jail. They ended up telling me why that was. It was because they deemed you a, a very high flight risk. At this point, they dispatched me to a little holding cell at the front of the jail. It was just me in there, and I paced around in a haze of denial and confusion. Four days? For that? But even more pressing, I was concerned about the film trip. We'd been arrested on the very first morning during the very first bit. This was about to be the least productive Danny Mullen filming operation ever when you factor in airfare, hotels, food, transportation, and now some soon to be very hefty legal bills. Speaking of which, if you want to help us with this ongoing and very costly legal battle, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. You get a lot of great content too. Two extra vlogs every month, extra cuts from every video, and to reward our very loyal patrons, we have live right now one of the long ago deleted Edward Forty Hands videos. You gotta get down into Patreon to see that one. Also, we got the new Danny Mullen Not Guilty merchandise. If you want to wear my mug around town, again, this goes towards supporting our long and very costly legal battle. A few hours go by in my single cell up front until an officer comes in and tells me that he has to take me into the back of the facility. I ask him again, am I indeed going to be here until Monday? And he tells me indeed I am. I realized that spending those four days in my little cozy single holding cell would have been a walk in a daisy field compared to where I was headed because they were about to release me into the general population of Eastern Tennessee criminals. When that door opened and all those, in my mind, hardened criminals were staring back at me, two thoughts entered my head. First, the ins and outs of the legal battle. Those are a million miles away right now. My number one priority has to be maintaining a positive attitude and also somewhat of a confident exterior so that I'm not taken advantage of or attacked amongst these criminals. And secondly, I thought, thank God I know Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm a, a longtime practitioner, purple belt, a very hardened purple belt, I might add. And if any of these guys tried to get silly with that Peter between their legs, well, I figured they would pay dearly for it in the form of a triangle choke. What's up, guys? Leo, I am uh, want to get you guys caught up a little bit. So, Danny's in jail here. It's a Thursday, and he's in jail apparently till Monday when he's going to see the, the judge, and he's going to be able to post bail. So, our best bet to get him out is to call a lawyer tomorrow morning, None are available right now. Maybe Leo wears a blonde um, wig and then that's the Danny Mullen video for the next week. Maybe Who I know this is something unprecedented get that's Nico never happened. Some help at AA. But this has okay. never happened, dude. It's oh, never happened. God. We are captainless, dude. Nico, 
After what felt like an hour of me just standing there, staring at the inmates and them staring back, one of the younger ones approached me. And after an up-close inspection, he said, Are you Danny Mullen from YouTube? I told him that I was. Hey everybody, this is Danny Mullen. I watch him on YouTube all the time. I've never been more grateful to be a micro-level celebrity. And from that moment on, everybody in the jail was super nice. The inmate who recognized me, even better, was an employee at the jail. He helped with laundry, he passed out food, in exchange for enhanced prisoner privileges. One of which was he had a text message only phone that allowed him to communicate with the outside world. We have a fan of the channel. What's your name? Dylan Sozenbach. His brother happens to be cellmates <laughs> with Danny Mullen right now <laughs> in Hawkins County Jail. What is he saying? Are we, tell him we're communicating with him. We have the saying, camera. Saying we're here right now. So I actually wasn't cellmates with this kid's brother, who was the prisoner slash fan who recognized me. Robbie is his name. Shout out to Robbie when you're walking free watching this someday. Please like the video if you want me to fly Robbie out for a video, because, um, I mean, he was definitely my largest source of comfort when I was in there, and I think he deserves it when he's out. I really wished I was cellmates with Robbie, but in reality, my cellmate was to be determined. I mean, Danny can communicate through this man's brother right now at Hawkins County Jail. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a Danny Mullen miracle. The phone access was super reassuring. I was able to communicate with both Leo and my dad to talk about potentially hiring a lawyer who could spring me before scheduled. But Robbie told me I would soon be locked in with my cellmate and I would lose phone privileges. Also, he told me to take a shower. Showering in jail is great. If you like having... 20 or so felons who are almost desperate enough to do something gay eyeing you up. Thankfully, there's a wall blocking off your lower body, but you still feel that piercing gaze on your flesh. After drying off, I met my real cellmate. Hi, I'm your cellmate. My real cellmate, we'll call him Ted. Ted was 50 years old and in for methamphetamine. We were then led to a tiny cell, which I learned... Ted and I would be spending the next 21 hours in. That was the schedule. 21 hours a day in a box with Ted. Tomorrow, there'd be three more hours of general intermingling, which is what had been going on when I arrived. First thing I noticed, the toilet is two feet away from Ted's bottom bunk. I'd never taken a shit while making eye contact with a drug addict before. And thankfully, despite he and I coming from different worlds, Ted and I got on all right. I remember when he announced my arrival to another prisoner through a ventilation shaft. Yeah, I got a new cellmate, boy. Says he's in here for impersonating a dental hygienist. What the hell you say he's in for? For impersonating a dental hygienist. Then we spent an hour playing one-on-one -on -one blackjack. I learned about Ted during that game. He just couldn't give up the meth. He'd been in and out of jail for it for decades, and he seemed 100% intent on procuring more once this yearish long stay was up. Also, he told me he'd been to five different jails, and the one we were currently staying in, according to him, was by far the worst he'd ever been in. So, you know, put some respect on yo boy's name. I survived Hawkins County. A brutal storm, he said, had come within striking distance of the jail a few weeks earlier, and he prayed with everything he had that it would shake the foundations of the jail and allow for an escape. The jail did stink, or at least the bedding really did. My mattress felt like an air mattress that had been deflated. It was seriously just a piece of rubber, and not a yoga mat piece of rubber either. We're talking molecules thin on an iron bed. My pillow was also my towel, folded up as best I could. The result of this coupled with the fact that the lights never fully went out, was me tossing and turning, waking up every 30 minutes or so with extreme hip pain from my skinny hip bones more or less being directly on a piece of iron. I slept fitfully until the next morning. A little update on uh, this whole uh, fiasco. Obviously, Danny Mullen's been in jail since yesterday. Um, I woke up this morning and the first thing I did was uh, call the law office down the street 
I spoke to a lawyer and he seems like uh, he's willing to help. They did post a bond for Danny. It's $5,000 and I'm currently right in front of a bail bondsman where we're going to go ahead and make that happen. Um, at least your boy's got enough money to, to front the, the uh, you know, the bail, the 10%. Cause, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Nico wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> so uh, thank God he's got good friends. All right. I was roused by a guard around 10 a.m. Malay? Malay? M Mullen. It took him a few tries to nail my last name, but freedom had come at last. Three days earlier than expected. Well, Susie, first of all, thank you for bailing me out. And, uh... We were documenting. Yeah, we... Oh, that right. We got bikes on, too. So. We did. It was just cops right out front. We didn't want to yeah. film it right in front of that, Nico? So, no. And then, yeah, I posted the $800. About $800 just to bail you oh, out. Wow. Okay. Do you have a friend with that? Because Nico could have done that. So just let you know, Nico <laughs> would not have been able to bail Speaking you out. Speaking of Nico, Susie has been telling us that her bail bonds company has condoms. Oh, yeah, we got one. And it's going to be the radio. Oh, yeah. Fit for yeah. little wee-wees? Yeah, do you have yeah, a... Danny yeah. there. What the Danny there. Wee -wee they're they're perfect for stand. my... But she wants you to put the uh, name of her bail bonds company on the video if you can. Anyway, it's right there. I also got the... I have in my possession the screenshot of your uh, your mugshot. So nice. That too. Hey, that was... Uh, I was starting to panic in there, man. Well, obviously. That was not... That was not fun. Nico would have broke. <laughs> Nico would not have been able to do it. Dude, dude I was starting to have some dark thoughts. What I was afraid of was just like, what if the judge has no sense of humor? And what if I didn't get out until Monday? And then on Monday, he was like, yeah, two years. You're doing two years. Well, we should probably uh, get up into Kentucky where we plan to go. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I love this. Time to adventure. Susie, you're amazing. Thank you for getting our you're boy welcome. out of jail. You are you know? very welcome. And uh, and check out her bail bonds place if you're ever in Hawkins hey, County. And if, yeah, yeah. Or if you just want to have some sex and you need sex, protection. Sex, condoms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need condoms. You got condoms. Sir, I was visualizing an officer coming and getting me out of my cell, and it happened thanks to Leo and Susie. And not you, Nico! Not him at all, bro. What did he do last night? Dude, he got hammered. He's so nervous. You got hammered last night? No! are you and No, he got hammered. I'm pushing a Nico right now last night. Dude, he's gonna be in the fucking Nico. Dude, the video's gonna be fucked. How are we gonna film? We gotta watch I like that. I like the dedication. He's an asshole. I like the dedication. I hate him right now. No. No, Danny, he's been an asshole to me the entire fucking time. Because I'm scared about how the business is gonna fuck. I like that. I like that. And I he like only that. cared like about that, wanting no to. F this is what I differ with. No, him. F you, dude. I, I hate you right now. No, we're seven. We're not friends right now. We're not friends. We're not friends. We can sleep in a little bit, man. I'm like, no, just because you had eight f beers. They opened at you eight, dude. You're an idiot. They he opened was at eight. And the bro. King, dude. Walking out of there was one of the sweetest moments of my life. Now, was it that rough? No, but the sudden loss of freedom was pretty jarring. I had to shit two feet away from a stranger. I was locked in a concrete box for 21 hours a day. There was nowhere to work out. The bedding was tremendously uncomfortable. The surfaces were all pretty dirty. And as I walked through the hallways out of the facility, I felt 50% profound gratitude at being free again, but also 50% profound sympathy for the prisoners who remained some of whom still had multiple years left on their sentences. From that point on, we drove up to Kentucky and we continued our film shoot. I'm sure you've enjoyed some of the videos that came from that, the Appalachian series on poverty, on snake churches. That afternoon though, when we got to our hotel in Pikeville, Kentucky, I remember having so much gratitude just for the hotel room I was in and the decent mattress and the private bathroom. That was the best part. I even took a picture of the hotel room in that moment of gratitude. So what happens now? I am still contending with a felony on my record. God willing, there will not be any more jail time, but it's still a complex matter that we're working on resolving. And it's been expensive. It's been more stressful to me than I've let on. So my ex experience in Hawkins County Jail I think it's changed me pretty significantly. Before ever being exposed to criminals like that, being amongst them, I was always waving the Blue Lives Matter flag. I was the hard law and order guy, and I still believe in supporting the police, and I still believe in law and order and consequences for your actions, but I now just have a lot more 
sympathy for the people who were born into situations that are near hopeless when it comes to avoiding jail. One moment that was very impactful for me was when I was in the courtroom on Monday morning getting ready to face the judge. I saw a guy about my age take the stand. The judge asked him, Sir, would you like to hire an attorney? Would you like to have a public defender appointed to you? Or would you like to represent yourself? Now, earlier, this man had told the judge that he only makes $900 a month through disability. That's probably not enough to hire a high-quality attorney. The next best option, obviously, to people like myself and probably to you, go with the public defender. Have a professional represent you. But this poor guy came from such a disadvantaged background that he chose to represent himself because I think those were the only words in the judge's sentence that he understood. For the next couple of minutes, he bumbled and, and mumbled and probably got himself into a lot more trouble legally than he would have if he'd grown up in an environment that had taught him a little bit more about the workings of the legal system. So I feel a lot of sympathy for guys like that, too. And I met many people like that when I was locked away in Hawkins County Jail. And that's been my rundown of the Hawkins County Jail experience. See you guys soon with another video. Hopefully one that doesn't end with me and the slammer. Yeah, that would be great.